Hello and welcome to section 3 of Not Making for Beginners. In this section I'll be showing you some of the strategies and tactics used in making circular netting such as crab rings or cast nets or anything circular. So we're going to start out with a very simple exercise and I'll show you the basic tactic and used in making circular netting. It's not the only one but it's it's probably the most widely used tactic. So I'm going to start out by making starter loops and I'm only going to make three. And that creates two loops. And we still have only two loops, you see. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put in what's called a widener. And a widener is nothing more than one of these starter loops that we're going to put right in the middle of the two loops that we've created. And let me show you how that's done. <clears throat> What we do is we come up between our loops and exit the exact same knot that we started with, the little starter loops. In this case it's called a widener. Take that off, drop down, and put in another row. Now, as you'll see, we now have three loops. Okay, there's our widener loop. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it down one more. Okay, you'll notice there's a diamond formed underneath our widener. What I'm going to do is put in another widener that attaches to the bottom of this mesh. And now for our widener. And now we have four loops. And what we've made, in essence, is a long, thin triangle, like that. We started with two loops, now we're down to four loops. Now, imagine this is like a slice of pizza. And we added a slice here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here here, here, here. Can you imagine if that would form into a circle? Well, that's the strategy of making a circle like this. Let me show you a different view. And, but for right now, let me show you a different strategy entirely. I'm going to work down and show you a different strategy.
in this strategy what I'm going to do is put in a whole section of wideners some net makers what they do is they'll work down uh, without putting any wideners in to 18 inches to 2 feet down and then they'll run a whole row of nothing but wideners to make their circular netting and let me show you what that does Now let's count our loops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven loops. Just by adding a whole row of wideners in. And what they do is they'll come down two feet, which will, uh, and they'll go ahead and put a, a single row of wideners in, and that's pretty much it then they just create all their webbing and that's the only wideners that they uh, do now just so you'll know there's another strategy and let me show you what that's about it would take some figuring and planning but what you do is this instead of putting wideners in you put in reducers and how you do that is by grabbing two loops at once so what you're doing is you're actually starting at the circumference of your net and working inside it would take a lot of figuring and a little work with a calculator but it is doable let me show you what that looks like that's what a reducer looks like I don't know if you can follow me, but uh, let me show you a different setup. Now, let me show you a starter that I used when I make cast nets and uh, see if it'll make some sense to you. This is what's commonly called a starter and what it is is the beginning of a cast net and let me show you what I do and how I was taught. On our starter loops up here I make 33 starter knots. Uh, what I do is I take the amount of wideners, in this case 11 wideners and multiply it times three to come up with 33 starter loop. Um, if you want 12, it'd be 36. My father always did a 13 widener, so he started out with 39 uh, starter knots. Now I'm going to cut it loose and lay it out where you can take a little better look at it and understand what I'm talking about okay I've laid it all out and let me show you what I'm talking about you have a full mesh underneath your starter meshes on the very end you want to tie a single mesh knot then a widener then three mesh knots then a widener then three mesh knots then a widener in this way when I come to the end I'll have 11 wideners and I'll just follow that down and let me show you what that does
See how it forms our circle? Now there should be one obvious question. Well, how do I join these two ends? Well, you do that by putting in a seam. And I want to show you how that's done. Okay, what I've done is I've made a small rectangular section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each end and join it with the other. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a seam down. In this case, it's going to make uh, pretty much what's a kind of a sleeve shape or cylinder shape. Anyway, let me make it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I've made the sleeve and there's our seam. Do you see the seam? Well, that is kind of the whole idea of making the seam, not being able to see it. So, as you can tell, it's all the way around. And let me see if I can find it again. Yep, there it is. See it? Well, let me give you a different perspective of what I'm talking about. Well, I hope that gives you a different perspective of what I'm talking about. What I did is I came in with some green string so you could see that what I do is actually I cut away the very first loop that we make in our starter and I put in a seam loop. I leave the tag end uh, long and tie it off here then I work in a crisscross manner like this. Whenever you make net and you're constantly flipping it around working left to right or right to left if you're left-handed, well when you fold it over it automatically lines up for you to put this zigzag pattern in and that forms a loop in itself and you'll never be able to see it. And let me show you how to tie that knot. Uh, it's very simple. It's done freehand. And it is your first lesson in uh, net repair. They're known as cider left and cider right. Let me show you how that's done. Okay, it's actually very simple. It's done freehand. And what you do is you line up your seam zigzag. Now my next knot I want to be right here. And I want it to line up with these knots here. So what I do is I pull it up side by side. Then I throw a loop over the top and I come down like that and I've caught of bring it down to where it's level with the other knot see then I'm going to cross over and put my next one in the opposite side which will be right here so I just pull it down throw a loop come behind both and then kind of finagle it down in position to where it's even That's it, see? And I'll go ahead and put one more in to match up this other side. So throw it out, come behind both, and pull it through and it's going to form a half hitch and it'll 
will be even with this knot here. And that side or right. Now I'm at the very end and all I do is cut this off and tie it in here. And that will form the very end of our joinery. Uh, these are just half hitches. Um, they can slide on the loose end. Now remember that this is for netting that's to be dipped. Once they're dipped in either a, a commercial net dip or polyurethane, these knots are going to be locked in place and you'll probably never see your seam again. And uh, the same with these, our slip knots up top. Um, once they get treated with a polyurethane or a net dip, those knots will be locked in. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this section. Tune into the next section because I'm going to save you a lot of headache and heartache. I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot certain problems. See you next time.